Last summer, I made up my mind to go for a hike close to home. The trail was famous for its great views and was usually packed with people. But I got there late that day, just when the sun was starting to set, making the trees look like long, dark shapes. I thought I had enough time for a short walk before it got dark. The path was empty, which was weird for such a popular place. It was a weekday, and it was getting late, so maybe that's why everyone had left. Being alone out there felt strange, but kind of nice too. I could hear birds singing far off, their sounds bouncing around the trees. It was quiet in a good way, the kind where you can hear yourself think. But as I kept walking, those bird sounds got fainter and everything else went silent. It was so quiet, it felt heavy. But I tried to tell myself it was all good, just the way things get quiet in the woods when it's almost night. That's when I heard something moving in the bushes a bit to the right. I stopped dead in my tracks, my heart racing. All the scary stories about the woods I'd ever heard came flooding back. I stood there, not moving, but nothing came out, and the noise stopped as quick as it had started. It's just a rabbit, I told myself, and started walking again. I hadn't walked much farther when the quiet was broken again, this time by a noise to my left. It was closer and seemed like it was done on purpose. I didn't hang around to see what it was. I felt a rush of energy and turned around, walking as fast as I could without actually running. I didn't want to freak out or be chased. I kept going fast toward my car, and the woods stayed silent. No birds, no little animals moving around, just the sound of my own steps and my heart beating loud. I got to my car just as it was getting really dark. As I drove off, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was very, very wrong with this place. I kept telling myself it was just my imagination, that there was a normal reason for the quiet and the noises. But I can't lie. I felt so much better once I was out of there. I still don't know what was making those noises in the bushes that day, and I'm kind of okay with that. Not long ago, my wife and I went hiking in a state park. It was a beautiful day. The air smelled like trees and dirt. We love hiking and know the trails well, but we're always careful because you never know what can happen in the wild. We picked a path near the road to make things easy. As we walked, the noise from the cars got quieter, and all we could hear was the leaves and birds. That's when I saw something weird, a pair of sunglasses just lying there. It was strange, but we didn't think much of it and kept going. The path took us deeper into the forest, and the trees got thicker, making cool patterns of light and shadow. Suddenly, I saw two guys, probably in their thirties, fit and tall, coming around the corner. I got this cold feeling, like a warning. They came up to us, all smiles, and one of them had the sunglasses I'd seen before. He asked if they were ours. I said no pretty sharply, and they just stood there, way too close for comfort. It felt like when someone sits right next to you in an empty movie theater, really awkward and weird. I got this bad feeling in my gut, and without saying anything, I told my wife we needed to go. We turned around and started walking fast, not looking back. But then we heard footsteps. They were following us. My heart was racing, and I felt more and more scared with every step they took. Then, just like that, they walked right past us and kept going down the path like nothing was wrong. I felt relieved, but still confused and worried. We got to our car, and I drove us out of there as fast as I could. The park didn't feel peaceful anymore after what happened. A while later, I heard about a terrible crime in that same park. 
I don't know if it was those same guys, but I'll never forget how they made me feel. Like something bad was going to happen. But in the end, my wife and I were okay. And that's what counts. We still hike, but we're extra careful now. We always listen to our gut feelings. Because sometimes the scariest things are the ones you can't see. My girlfriend and I were hiking in the deep woods of Pennsylvania. It was a first for us, being alone in such a far-off place. The path was not used much, with wild plants and fallen leaves taking over. As we started going up, we saw fresh blood on the rocks along the path. We felt a cold shiver. We stood there, looking at the blood, the quiet of the woods, making our fears bigger. We found some fur nearby, which made us feel a bit better, thinking it was an animal that had been hurt. Taking a deep breath, we decided to keep going, trying to ignore the creepy feeling. But just as we started moving, a young guy, about 20 years old, came out of nowhere. He was running up the hill really fast, his face showing no emotion. He didn't even look at us as he passed by leaving us feeling weird. The rest of the walk was super quiet. We didn't see anyone else. When we got to the top, a hidden view of a tall waterfall was there. But what caught our eye was a new hat on a rock near the waterfall. It was the first sign of people since we saw the young guy. A few steps away, a clean, dry sleeping bag was hanging on a tree branch. The sight was creepy making us feel even stranger. The beauty of the waterfall was covered by the creepiness of the situation. We felt a need to leave. With our hearts beating fast, we almost ran down the other side of the path, the sounds of our quick steps echoing in the quiet woods. Finally, seeing our car made us feel better. We jumped in, the car's engine breaking the silence. As we drove away, we couldn't help but look back at the path disappearing into the woods. To this day, I still wonder, what was going on in those woods? And what was that guy running from? Last year, when the leaves started changing color and the air got a bit chilly, I decided to go on a camping trip all by myself. It was like a final adventure before the winter snow would make my camping gear useless. I chose a quiet valley, surrounded by tall mountains and thick woods. I didn't think I'd run into any other campers because it was late in the season. My plan was to set up my tent and then head off the main path, climbing up to a couple of lakes that I could see on my map about three kilometers away from where I was camping. But I got a bit carried away and ended up taking a few extra trips along the way. By the time I got to the campsite, the sun was already starting to set. The valley was known for having grizzly bears every now and then. So I quickly set up my tent and then headed into the woods. There was a path for a bit, but soon I was just walking through thick bushes with no trail to follow. To make sure any bears knew I was there, I kept shouting, hey ho, as I walked. About a kilometer away from the lakes, I heard a response. Hey ho, a woman's voice shouted back. It was loud and clear, like she was right behind me. I turned around, expecting to see someone coming out of the bushes, but there was no one. I waited, my heart beating fast, but still, no one showed up. Feeling a bit scared, I kept going and reached the lakes. From where I was, I looked down at the forest below, but there was no sign of anyone. I felt like someone was watching me, and with it getting darker, I decided not to stay. I pretty much ran back to my campsite, getting there just as it was getting completely dark. Luckily, a few other campers had arrived, they told me they hadn't seen anyone on their way in. And given the way the hike was laid out, they would have if there was someone. 
The rest of the night was quiet, but I couldn't stop thinking about the voice in the woods. Whoever it was, if they had left that night, they did so in complete darkness, which was a scary thought. The only ways into that part of the valley were through the campsite or over some big mountain passes. I still don't know who that person could have been. A few years ago, my family and I went on a walk to Fish Lake in Glacier National Park. We got up as early as you can with a teenager and a kindergartner. The walk was tough, especially for our youngest. It was a hard uphill walk, climbing over 1,300 feet and covering about six miles. The path was quiet and calm, with only a handful of other walkers going the other way. We were happy to have the path to ourselves. But when we entered a thick, dark forest, everything changed. A strange feeling came over us, and we kept looking behind us. We started walking faster, and our silent walk became loud as we started shouting and making noise, trying to get rid of the strange feeling. We thought Fish Lake would be a nice place where we could rest and have a picnic, just like we did the day before at Fairy Falls. But when we got to the lake, it wasn't what we thought it would be. The grass and bushes were taller than my husband, blocking the view of the lake. There was nowhere to sit and relax. The strange feeling we had in the forest didn't go away. It got stronger. We quickly ate our sandwiches, the quickest meal I've ever had. The feeling of discomfort was too strong to ignore, and we decided to leave the lake and go back to the part of the path we knew. We almost ran, wanting to get past the bridge that marked the edge of the dark forest. Once we got past that bridge, the feeling of discomfort went away. We were back on familiar ground, and the rest of the walk was normal. Looking back, my husband and I are sure that something was watching us, maybe a mountain lion or a bear. We felt like we were being followed, and with our young child with us, we were so relieved to get out safely. My friend and I were pumped to camp and hunt turkeys in the state forest by the Appalachian Trail. We knew the place well from our winter trips. We picked a nice flat spot for our tent, not too rocky and close to a shelter. Setting up camp, we were both excited about the turkey hunt. My friend was sorting his stuff in the tent, and I went to the edge of the clearing. That's when I spotted something a quick shadow moving through the thick bushes. I didn't worry much, thinking it was just another hiker looking for a spot to sleep. As the day ended, we walked around the woods looking for turkeys. When we got back to camp, it was getting dark, but not too dark for a headlamp yet. We decided to light a small fire to chill and eat by. I was looking for wood when I saw something move again. I yelled out, yo, to let them know we were there and heard someone running off. It was a bit creepy, but nothing else happened. Logically, a deer makes sense, but I swear I saw a person and they had a red t-shirt. We spent another night there and didn't see anything strange on the next day. I never quite figured out who or what it was that I saw on our first day. I was backpacking in the Bob Marshall Wilderness, a big, wild place that goes on forever. The day was long and tiring, with my boots crunching on the path and birds chirping far away. When the sun started to set, turning the sky orange and pink, I decided to set up camp. I found a small open spot between tall pine trees, put up my tent, cooked a quick meal over a small fire, the smell of food mixing with the fresh smell of the forest. 
After taking some melatonin and vitamin one, I crawled into my sleeping bag, ready for a good night's sleep. During the night, I heard noises outside my tent. Leaves rustling, twigs snapping, a low growl that echoed in the quiet. But I was too tired to check it out, thinking it was just normal night sounds in the wilderness. When morning came, the soft light of the sun shone through my tent. I got out of my tent, stretching out the stiffness from sleeping on the ground. That's when I saw them, big, round marks in the dirt, circling my tent about five meters out. A cold feeling ran down my spine as I realized what they were. Bear tracks. The rest of the day, I was on high alert. Every sound of leaves rustling, every twig snapping made my heart race. When night came, I made sure to hang my food high in a tree, away from any curious bears. I hardly slept that night, every sound seeming louder in the quiet wilderness. The next morning, I packed up my camp and left. Back in my university days, my buddies and I loved to go for late night walks around our town. We knew the paths like the back of our hands. They were usually quick trips to a beautiful viewpoint where we'd chill out, sometimes with a smoke under the twinkling stars. On nights when the moon was bright, we'd find our way around the paths without needing our phone torches. One such night, five of us set off on our moonlit journey. We reached a flat, forested part of the path that went on for about a quarter mile. It was here that one of my pals had to use his phone torch for a bit. As the light cut through the dark, I spotted several pairs of eyes shining back at us from about 20 feet away, just out of the light's reach. I pointed them out, and a wave of fear washed over us. We rushed to turn our torches on, and when we did, we found ourselves surrounded by the creepy glow of eyes reflecting in the dark. There were probably a dozen pairs of eyes silently staring at us. One of my mates, trying to act tough, picked up a stick and started making threatening sounds. Whatever animals those eyes belonged to, they ran off into the dark without a peep. But we knew we were being watched. We each found big sticks and walked with our torches pointing in all directions for the rest of the trip. They were probably coyotes guiding us, a behavior typical of their kind. But the sight of those dozen pairs of eyes reflecting in the dark will forever be burned into my mind. As we got closer to the end of our path, the adrenaline started to fade, replaced by a feeling of dread. We had made it back, safe and sound, but not without a story that would haunt our nightmares. It was a pitch black night and I was walking down a narrow path, surrounded by high rocky walls. The air was quiet, not even a slight breeze to move the leaves or branches. The silence was so deep, it felt like it was alive, wrapping me in its cold embrace. Out of nowhere, a terrible sound broke the silence. It was a cry, muffled but desperate, like someone screaming for help at the top of their lungs. It was mixed with the high-pitched scream of a baby, raw and bone-chilling. My heart was racing as the creepy cry bounced off the rocky walls. Then I heard it, the soft sound of footsteps. They were close, too close for comfort. The hair on the back of my neck stood up, a warning signal from deep within. I froze, holding my breath. I knew this area like the back of my hand, but this, this was something new and terrifying. Gathering my courage, I moved closer to the source of the sound. But the closer I got, the stronger my gut feeling told me to run away. All of a sudden, the cry got louder and more desperate. I felt a shiver run down my spine, a sense of fear washing over me. 
so I quickly turned and ran towards my car, parked not too far away. When I reached my car, my heart was pounding in my ears as I fumbled with the keys and quickly got in. With a sigh of relief, I started the car and drove off, leaving the unsettling sounds behind. Once I got home, I couldn't forget the creepy experience. Curiosity got the better of me, and I googled, cry for help, scream at night. The search results showed that it was a red fox mating call, and it was red fox mating season in Colorado. The realization hit me hard. The terrifying sounds, the footsteps, it was all just nature doing its thing, and a big misunderstanding. But that night, that walk, will forever be burned into my memory. A chilling reminder of how the unknown can sometimes be the scariest thing of all. And even though I now know what caused those sounds, the memory of that night still sends chills down my spine. It was a bright day, and I started my walk on the trail. The river nearby made a calming sound, and I could feel the small stones under my shoes. The path was one I knew well, tucked between the river and a road that wasn't used much. There were a few spots where you could cross the river and get to the road. I was with a group of people I work with, all of us happy to get out of the office for a bit. But as we walked, I found myself falling behind, caught up in the beauty of the place. As I turned a corner on the trail, I saw something odd, a truck parked right next to the path. A man was leaning on it, looking around before his eyes landed on me. He said hello in a friendly way, asking about my day and who I was with. His eyes kept moving around, which made me feel a bit weird. He pointed out that he couldn't see any of my friends, making it clear how alone I was. His words stuck in my head, making me feel cold and alone. He talked about a local hiking group and said he wanted to give me a business card that was somewhere in his truck. He asked if I could help him find it. I felt scared. I said no to his offer, my heart beating fast. Just then, I heard the sound of my friend's dog's collar. I felt better as the dog came running up the path its tail wagging fast. I quickly said, Hey, looks like my friends are close, bye. I turned and ran off, feeling better with the dog there. Looking back, I'm not sure what the man wanted. Was he just trying to mess with me? Or did he really not know how scary his words were? Either way, it reminded me to always be careful and aware, even in places that seem safe. When I got back to my friends, I told them what happened. They looked as scared as I felt. We decided to end our walk early and go back to our cars. It was the scariest experience I ever had while hiking. On a regular day, my husband, our faithful Labrador, and I went for a walk on the paths we know so well near our place. The sun was up, and the breeze carried the fresh smells of pine and soil. We loved our walks in the wild, but that day, there was something off. We'd gone about 2.5 miles, following the path we knew so well, when everything went quiet. It was weird, like the whole forest just stopped making noise. No birds, no sound of leaves, and it felt like even the wind was holding its breath. Our dog, who's usually so chill, picked up on it first. He got stiff, his hair stood up, and he showed his teeth without making a sound. Seeing him like that freaked me out. My husband grabbed my hand tight, and he looked around the thick trees. We could both feel it, like someone was watching us, a feeling that told us we weren't by ourselves. Keep moving, he said quietly, trying to sound brave but looking scared. I just nodded, feeling a lump in my throat, and we kept going, fast but quiet. The more we walked, the more it felt like something bad was in the air, like a threat that wasn't saying anything. I could hear my heart pounding, and our dog's quiet growling was the only sound as we moved quickly. 
but we didn't run or talk. We just walked step by step while the scary feeling got stronger. Then all at once it was over. A little while later the normal sounds of the forest came back, the birds, the wind, the leaves. Our dog calmed down, his tail wagging again, and my husband's face got its color back. We stopped to breathe, to hear the life around us, and to feel the sun coming through the trees. We never talked about it after that, not wanting to bring back the fear, but we couldn't forget it. It reminded us that even in places we think we know, there are secrets. We were walking on our usual hiking trail that goes through thick woods and up the side of the mountain. My wife and I love these walks. They are a break from everything, a time to just be with each other. But something felt weird that day. I got this cold feeling, like something bad was going to happen, even though it was hot outside. I tried to ignore it, thinking it was all in my head. But then I saw my wife looking worried too, and I knew it wasn't just me. We didn't talk about it but we both felt it. Everything was too quiet. No birds singing, no little animals running around, just silence. It felt like the whole forest was waiting for something. We decided we'd had enough and started heading back faster than usual. On the way back, we ran into a lady with her dog. The dog was acting scared, not like itself at all. The lady asked if we'd seen any wild animals because her dog was acting up. We hadn't seen anything, but with the dog acting weird and the creepy quiet, we started thinking maybe there was a big animal out there, watching us. We didn't stop to think anymore, we just wanted to get out of there. We started moving fast, almost running, feeling like something was right behind us the whole time. We didn't relax until we got to our car, with the woods far away. We never saw anything, but it was obvious something was out there. Maybe a big cat, like a mountain lion was hiding and watching us. The drive home was quiet. We were safe, but we couldn't shake off the feeling of what could have happened. The woods had always been our happy place, but now we knew it was also home to wild animals that we might not see. After that, we were more careful when we went hiking. I was by myself and my car was just a dark shape against the dimming sky. The woods, which used to be so peaceful and pretty, now seemed full of hidden dangers and twisted trees. I was breathing hard and fast as I started to walk quicker. The only sound was the crunch of leaves under my shoes. Out of nowhere, I heard a man swearing and yelling. His voice was loud and angry, bouncing off the trees, making it sound like he was all around me. I couldn't see him but it felt like he was right there, and I was getting really scared. Was he shouting at me? I couldn't stop thinking about what might happen. I started to run, my heart beating so hard I thought it might burst. I tried to grab my phone, thinking I might need to call for help. His shouting got louder and more urgent, like he was coming after me. I was full of panic, my legs carrying me faster and faster, trying to get away. But then, just as fast as it started, the yelling got quieter. I felt a bit better as I got further away from him. But I didn't stop or slow down until I was in my car with the doors locked and the engine on. I drove off without looking back, leaving the dark woods behind me. That night shook me up bad. It showed me how quickly things can go from calm to scary. I promised myself I'd never go hiking alone when it's getting dark again. The sun was setting as I decided it was time to head back. The path was too risky for my kids, and the harsh desert was no place for them when they were so worn out. As we made our way down, I could see my truck from afar, a sign we were close to safety, until I spotted someone. This guy was weird, poking around my truck, too at ease being all alone in the desert. My pulse quickened as I watched him mess with my ride. I shouted, trying to scare him away but he just ducked out of sight, like a hunter watching its target. As we got closer, the mess he made was obvious. The tires were shredded, the gas tank was leaking, our only way back to the rest of the world was gone. Fear kicked in, 
We were stuck, exposed, and he was somewhere out there. The stranger, now clearly dangerous, started moving towards us again, his motives hidden in the fading light. I never felt so cut off from everything, but luck was on our side that day. My phone, which hardly ever works out here, managed to get a signal. The cops showed up just in time, their loud arrival driving the guy back into the endless desert. They looked for him, but the desert doesn't give up its secrets easily. That scary day stuck with me for a long time. The thought of going back to those paths, the chance of running into that guy again, it gave me the creeps. As I reached the high point in the Swiss mountains, the sky was filled with dark clouds that promised a nasty storm. The air was so thin up here, I could see my breath fogging up in front of me. I'd been hiking since the sun came up, and now it was getting dark. I needed to get my tent up fast. I found a spot that seemed okay, not too bumpy, and with some tall pine trees around that looked like they could take the wind. I got my tent out and started to set it up, but the wind was picking up, and the tent was flapping around like crazy. Then it started to rain, just a few drops at first, but soon it was pouring down hard. Just then, lightning started cracking the sky open, lighting everything up for a split second at a time. It was pretty cool to watch, but also kind of scary. And that's when I saw them, eyes, lots of them, shining back at me from the dark. My heart nearly stopped. What was out there? I couldn't move, just stood there while the eyes blinked and moved around. Then lightning struck again, and I could see they were just mountain goats. They looked kind of spooky standing there with the storm behind them, but I had to laugh at myself for getting scared. The storm didn't let up all night. It was so loud outside, but inside my tent, it was just me and the sound of my breathing, and the goats making noises nearby. They were huddled up close, trying to stay out of the wind and rain just like me. When I woke up, everything was quiet. The storm was gone, and so were the goats. It was like none of it had ever happened. I packed up my stuff and started hiking back. The sun was starting to come out, making everything look fresh and new. I've always loved being out in the open air, where it's just me and the rustling leaves, walking on paths that aren't quite flat. That day, the park was wrapped in a thin fog, making the usual trails look like something from a spooky tale. Walking further into the forest, it got colder, and the light rain made the ground all muddy, sticking to my shoes with every step. The trees felt like they were closing in, their branches reaching out like hands against the darkening sky. I was by myself, or at least I thought I was, but suddenly I felt really alone, like a heavy feeling sitting right on my heart. A mile down the path, everything felt off. The peace I usually felt when hiking was cut through by a fear I couldn't explain. My heart was pounding, and I could see my breath in the cold air. I stopped to listen, but all I could hear was my heart beat loud in my ears. I tried to convince myself it was nothing, just a lonely feeling messing with my head. But the fear didn't go away. It wrapped around me tighter like the fog that was hiding the way I came. I'm not usually scared, but right then, I knew I had to get out of there. I spun around and started to walk fast, almost running, the sound of my shoes in the mud loud against the quiet trees. I didn't stop until I got to my car, feeling a wave of relief as I locked the doors and turned on the engine. Driving off, I looked back in the mirror, half expecting to see something or someone following me, but there was nothing just the road behind me and the trees getting smaller in the distance. I still go to that park and walk those paths, but I never do it alone. Hiking the Appalachian Trail in Vermont was our go-to getaway. My wife, our dog Seamus, and I loved the thick woods, the fresh air, and the thrill it brought us. Seamus, our golden retriever, was a hit with other hikers because he was so friendly and always led the way, tail high and happy. On a warm summer day, we hit the trail, aiming for a well-known shelter with great views and a welcoming vibe. We were making great time, 
the path well worn under our feet, and Seamus trotting along steadily. But as we got close to the shelter, something didn't sit right. It was too quiet, and the normal buzz of hikers chatting was missing. Inside, there was just this one guy sitting there, staring down the path. We said hi, but he didn't even blink, just looked at us with this cold, empty stare. Seamus, who's always up for making new friends, just froze. He growled softly, which was totally unlike him. His ears were pinned back, and he wouldn't go near the shelter, instead heading back to the trail. That was enough for us. We trusted Seamus's gut feeling. We grabbed our gear and kept walking, leaving the quiet guy and the shelter behind us. The rest of the hike was tense, and we barely spoke, that weird meeting looming over us. When the sun started to dip, we finally made it to another campsite. It felt good to see other hikers again, all smiles and hellos, a sharp change from before. That evening, around the campfire, we told our story to some other hikers. They listened, really listened, and some seemed to get it. One older hiker said he'd been through something similar a while back. It was a reminder that the wild is beautiful but also full of secrets and sometimes silent warnings. We had a peaceful night's sleep, the fire's glow and the chatter of friendly folks making us feel safe. Next morning, we were back on the trail, which greeted us like nothing had happened. But that strange encounter? It stuck with us, a story to tell about trusting Seamus and the silent alarm bells in the backwoods. Not long ago, I took a walk in a part of the woods I hadn't seen before. The trees were so thick they almost hid the sky, and all I could hear were my own steps and birds far off. The deeper I went, the less clear the path got, and the bushes grew wild. Suddenly, I heard a sharp squeak. It was loud and weird enough to make me stop in my tracks. For a second, I thought maybe there was a secret house around. The noise was just like a creaky door hinge. Driven by curiosity, I went towards the sound, half expecting to find a small house hidden by the trees. But there was nothing. No house, no clearing, just more trees. Then, out of nowhere, I saw her. A woman was sitting by a tree, wearing jeans and white Adidas shoes, with a fancy black Prada bag next to her. She looked so out of place in the middle of the wild. She was looking down, her face empty, like she wasn't really there. I moved closer, thinking to say hello, but she didn't even look up. It was like I wasn't there, or she was in her own world. It was so quiet and strange, it made me feel cold inside. The squeaky noise with no source, her just appearing there, and no house in sight, it was all too weird. I couldn't shake off the feeling that something bad was going on. I walked away slowly, watching her until the trees hid her from view. As I picked up the pace, the woods felt like they were closing in, and it got darker, like the sun was hiding. I kept going until I was back on paths I knew. Looking back one last time, the woods were quiet, as if the woman and the squeaky door were never there. I still can't make sense of it. Was it all in my head, or did I come across something the woods weren't ready to show? That memory sticks with me, like a scary riddle without an answer. It was a hot summer day when we started our walk in the woods near Lake George. The path was one we knew well, but something felt off this time. Everything was too quiet, like the forest was waiting for something bad to happen. About an hour in, we spotted a young guy and girl, both about twenty, just sitting by a rock. They didn't really fit in with the peaceful setting, but I didn't think much of it. I figured they were just another couple of hikers out to enjoy the day. Then my girlfriend leaned in and said quietly, Did you see? That guy's got a gun. I hadn't noticed, and hearing that made me shiver. We picked up the pace, got to the top of the hill feeling a mix of happy to be there and scared. We didn't stay long. The beautiful view we came for was now just a backdrop to our worry. Going back down, we were on edge. Every little sound made us jump. And then we saw them again, heading up as we were going down. The girl wouldn't look up, just stared at the ground and moved like she was scared. The guy was right behind her, 
a big gun hanging from his neck, staring straight at me. We didn't say anything, but it was clear they didn't want us there. We walked past them, my heart beating so fast I thought they could hear it. When they were out of sight, we ran all the way to the car. The drive back was quiet, both of us just thinking about what had happened, feeling heavy with all the things we didn't say. Later on, we found out what was really going on. The news said there was a big standoff right where we were walking. The girl had been taken by force, and the guy was armed and ready for a fight. We had been right in the middle of something really dangerous. Knowing how close we came to getting hurt was a wake-up call. We were lucky to get away without a scratch. It made us realize that even the places we love can be dangerous. We decided we'd be more careful from now on, listen to our gut, and never ignore the silence in the forest again. That night is etched in my memory. It was pitch black, so dark you couldn't see your own hands. I was just 18, feeling bold and a bit reckless, walking back from a party by myself. The road I was on, I knew it well, but without any moonlight, it felt completely alien. The chill in the air made me shiver, and a light fog was rolling in, making my breath look spooky. I was walking fast, hands in my pockets, lost in thoughts about the party. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I bumped into something, no, someone. I heard them gasp, a sound that made my heart jump. Without thinking, I dropped into a crouch, fists up, ready for whatever might come. The other person must have been just as scared because everything went quiet, really quiet. It felt like ages, just waiting there, every nerve on edge. Then, headlights from a car sliced through the darkness, and for a second, everything lit up. I blinked, my eyes stinging from the light, and when I could see again, I was alone. Whoever it was had disappeared without a trace. My heart was pounding so hard I could barely hear anything else. I didn't walk after that, I ran. I didn't stop or look back until I was home, safe, with the door locked tight behind me. I tried to catch my breath, leaning on the door, feeling like I just escaped something terrible. I told the story later and it always gave me and everyone listening the creeps. Tahoe was where I grew up, and it's where my kids learned to love the wild just as much. By 14, my son could navigate those trails blindfolded. That's why I wasn't worried when he and his pal decided to spend the night out in desolation wilderness. They pitched their tent next to a quiet lake the sky turning all shades of red and gold as the sun set. They had a laugh over their campfire cooked dinner before crawling into their tent, feeling pretty good about their day. But later that night, things got spooky. They started hearing weird noises outside, like footsteps, but heavier, definitely not a person. The boys were scared stiff, holding on to their knives for dear life. Then they heard this creepy purring noise, right outside their tent. It got louder, and then, bam, something big hit the side of their tent. It was a mountain lion, pressing its face right up against the tent wall. My son didn't think twice. He punched the spot where the lion's face was. The beast screamed and ran off into the dark. The boys didn't sleep a wink after that, waiting for the sun to come up. When it did, they bolted out of there, packed up fast, and didn't stop talking about their crazy night the whole way home. They got back safe, but that night changed them. They still hit the trails, but they're more careful now, knowing that nature's got a wild side. I've always been a night person, loving the peace of late night walks. But one night, about two months ago, things got really scary. I left my house at around 1.30 a.m. The air was cool, and the town was quiet under the streetlights. I walked around without any plan, just enjoying the calm. By 2 a.m., I decided to head back home. As I was walking back, a black van drove down the street. It was moving slow, which seemed a bit odd. I didn't think much of it and kept walking, but I felt a bit worried. Ten minutes later, the same black van drove by again. This time, I noticed it didn't have any license plates. I felt a chill and started walking faster, 
my heart beating hard. The van showed up again, this time stopping a few houses ahead of me. I freaked out. I turned around and ran, taking different streets until I ended up in someone's yard. I hid behind their fence, trying to catch my breath and stopped shaking. The van drove down the street again, its headlights cutting through the dark. After what felt like forever, it finally drove away. I stayed hidden for another twenty minutes, my heart still racing. Finally, I got the nerve to leave my hiding spot. I ran all the way back to my house, my footsteps loud in the quiet streets. And even now, every time I see a black van, my heart skips a beat. The memory of that night still haunts me, a chilling reminder that danger can lurk in the most unexpected places. Walking back the way I came, the night seemed to get darker, and the shadows longer, like they were reaching out to me. My heart was racing so fast, I could hardly hear the leaves crunching under my boots. I kept looking back, scared I might see someone following me, but it was just the thick trees and sometimes the shine of an animal's eyes far off. The path, which I used to stroll down without a worry, now felt like a trap, playing tricks on me with my own fear. Every little noise made me jump, and I held on to my flashlight for dear life, not daring to switch it on. I knew that if I did, it would be like setting off a flare for whatever was out there in the dark. It seemed to take forever, but finally, I saw the parking lot. I felt a wave of relief and almost ran the rest of the way. My hands were shaking so much, I could barely get the car key in the lock. When I got inside and locked the door, I took a deep breath for the first time in what felt like hours. Driving away was all a blur. I couldn't stop thinking about the man crying in the woods, the fear gripping me, and all the what-ifs. I parked back at the college and just sat in the silence of my car, letting it calm me down. The rush from the scare slowly faded, and I was left feeling wiped out but thankful to be safe. Time passed, and the memory of that night started to slip away, but it never completely disappeared. I stopped going for hikes at night, and whenever there was a full moon, I'd get that same nervous feeling, a reminder of the night I almost let my curiosity get the better of me. I learned something important that night about how tricky being alone can be, and the darkness that's always waiting just out of the moonlight's reach. It was a narrow escape from something I can't quite explain, and I'm glad I listened to my gut feeling. That night, I didn't just leave a man crying in the woods. I left behind the part of me that thought I was untouchable, and I learned to be more careful with the unknown. But sometimes, late at night, when the world is quiet, I can still hear that crying in my head. And I wonder, what was hiding in the shadows? What might have happened if I had turned on my flashlight? Those thoughts send a shiver down my spine, leaving me with a chill that no blanket can warm. A couple of years back, I was studying at the University of California, Santa Cruz. The school was surrounded by a stunning forest full of redwood trees. As a runner, I loved this place. I would often go for runs on the trails, enjoying the peace and quiet of the woods. One day, I started my run a bit late. The sun was already going down as I set off on one of the more remote trails. About a quarter of an hour into my run, I spotted a man up ahead. He was dressed in torn clothes and was walking deeper into the woods. It was clear from the setting sun and his direction that he was planning to stay the night there. I decided to keep my distance, but I had to pass him to get to my usual turning point. As I ran past him, he asked me a weird question. What came first, light or sound? I answered with, light, without slowing down. He mumbled something about thinking it was sound then started talking to himself. By the time I got to my turning point and started heading back, it was completely dark. I was nervous about passing the strange man again, but there was no other way back. I got to the place where I had first seen him, but he was gone. The trail didn't have any side paths, and he couldn't have gone back without me seeing him. He must have left the trail. Suddenly, I heard a scream. It came from a girl on a hill above the trail. I stopped, my heart racing. I shouted up to her, asking if she was okay. After a moment, 
I saw her climbing down the steep hill. She told me that she had been running when the same man started bothering her. He chased her up the hill, but she didn't know where he had gone. She had planned to stay the night there, too scared to come down. We decided to stick together and get out of the woods. The thought of the man possibly hiding in the shadows gave us the creeps. We ran until we reached the road, feeling a sense of relief. She thanked me, and then we went our separate ways. I never ran on that trail again. Santa Cruz is known for its oddities, and there are stories of students who fail and end up living in the forest. Maybe the man was one of those students. It was a hot summer evening, and the sun was about to set. My dad and I were camping in a far-off place next to a calm lake. This place was famous for its natural beauty and a hidden waterfall deep in the forest. We decided to hike through the thick forest near the lake. The smell of pine trees and wet soil filled the air. The only sounds were the crunching of leaves under our shoes and a bird chirping far away. As we went deeper, the forest seemed to get denser, with tall trees all around us. Our hike took a weird turn when we found a pile of cut branches and leaves. On top of this pile was a small kid's shoe, old and left behind. It was a creepy sight a single shoe in the middle of nowhere. We kept going and reached a small open area. My dad went to pee, and I stood watch, my back to him. Out of nowhere, we heard a child's voice saying, I'm over here. We both were shocked, the voice was loud and close, but there was no one around. My dad thought it was me, but my surprised face told him it wasn't. We spent the next half hour searching the area, shouting out to the unseen child but we found no one. There was nothing but the sound of the wind and leaves rustling. The happy sound of birds was replaced by an uncomfortable silence, as if the forest was holding its breath. We decided to give up on finding the waterfall and started heading back to the camp. But the forest wasn't done with us yet. As we walked back, we could hear something following us. Twigs were breaking, and bushes were moving as if something invisible was brushing against them. We walked faster, the sight of our camp was a relief in the growing darkness. Finally, when we reached our camp, the strange sounds stopped. We were alone, but the memory of the unseen person stayed with us. That night, the forest didn't seem as welcoming. The next morning, we left and never went back to that campsite. It was a normal midnight the kind where the moonlight barely makes it through the thick trees of the big park. This park, a favorite place for hikers, was super quiet and completely dark at this time. The only open space was a picnic spot, where my boyfriend and I were, trying to have some fun. We were sitting at one of the old picnic tables, the used up wood cold against my skin. I was looking at the river, its top shining a bit with the weak moonlight, giving off a soft glow that was both peaceful and spooky. My boyfriend, though, was looking at the pitch-black trees, a big difference to the calm river view. As we were lost in our own world, he suddenly stopped moving. His eyes got big, and in a quiet, almost silent voice, he said, There's a man coming towards us. I turned my head, following his look, and there he was. A guy in a white t-shirt, coming out from the shadows of the trees, walking fast towards us. The sight was enough to give me the creeps. Without thinking twice, I ran. I knew my boyfriend would follow. The man in the white shirt was probably within 25 feet of us by the time we started running. He didn't say a word, just kept walking at a scary speed. We didn't dare to look back. We got out of the park, our hearts beating fast in our chests. The feeling of getting away from that situation was huge. But the memory of that night still gives me the creeps. The picture of the man in the white shirt coming out from the darkness, is stuck in my mind. It was a clear reminder of how a fun adventure can turn into a scary experience. From that night onwards, I promised myself no more midnight forest adventures. The excitement was no longer worth the fear. The park, once a fun place, now held a scary memory. It was a creepy experience, one that taught us to be more careful and aware of our surroundings, even in places we thought we knew well. But the scariest part? 
The man in the white shirt was never found. We don't know who he was or what he wanted. And every time I think about that night, I can't help but wonder what would have happened if we hadn't run. The thought alone is enough to send chills down my spine. I was all by myself on a skinny path in the woods. It was a quiet day, and I hadn't seen any other people out hiking. The path was boxed in by thick bushes, and there was nowhere to run. The only sounds were the leaves moving in the wind and the sound of my own heart beating fast. Out of nowhere, I saw something moving up ahead. Three baby boars were walking on the path, just three steps away from me. They were small and covered in rough, spiky hair, their noses sniffing the ground as they walked. I stopped dead in my tracks, my heart racing. Where was their mom? I heard something moving in the bushes but I couldn't tell if it was in front of the baby boars or behind me. I knew that mother boars can be really protective of their babies. The thought of coming face to face with a wild boar made me feel really scared. I remembered hearing that boars don't like loud noises. With hands shaking, I took out my phone and opened Spotify. I looked through my playlists until I found Britney Spears. I turned the volume all the way up and hit play. The first notes of Toxic filled the quiet woods. For a second, everything was still. Then, just like that, the baby boars ran off into the bushes. The sound of movement got quieter and then stopped completely. I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding. Britney Spears' music kept playing, the pop beats now a comforting sound in the quiet woods. And I kept hiking, the adrenaline slowly leaving my body. It was a normal day. We were coming down from a big mountain in Colorado. The sun was bright, and the view was amazing. We were walking carefully on the rocky path. We were so focused on not tripping that we didn't notice we were off the trail. We were following a small path that looked like it was made by goats. It was hard to see because of all the rocks and plants. We only stopped when the path got really steep. That's when we realized, this doesn't look right. We looked around and saw no signs, no people, no trail. We were alone on the side of the mountain. The top of the mountain, which we had reached earlier, now looked far away. I felt my heart beating fast, and I felt dizzy. I had to sit down because my legs were shaking, and I was breathing hard. I was really scared. But then I remembered something. Before we started the hike, I had saved the trail map on my phone. I took out my phone and looked at the map. We were off the trail, but not too far. If we were careful, we could find our way back. We started climbing back up the steep path. It was hard, and we were tired and scared. But we kept going because we wanted to survive. After a long time, we found the trail again. We felt relieved and took a break to catch our breath. We had been lost, but now we were back on the trail. We were safe. That day taught us a lesson. It showed us how quickly things can go wrong and how important it is to pay attention to where we are. It was a regular Tuesday morning. I was in the middle of a long 14-mile walk on the Ice Age Trail in Wisconsin. This trail wasn't too far from where people lived, but it was up north and not many people visited. The morning was cool and the smell of pine trees and wet ground was in the air. I was all alone, with only the soft sound of leaves and the occasional bird sound for company. The path was hard, full of bumps and hidden tree roots. I was being careful, but I still tripped over a tree root. A sharp pain went through my ankle, and I knew right away that I had twisted it. My ankle started to swell, and the constant pain was a reminder of my problem. I was in the middle of nowhere, with almost no cell signal. Even if I could call for help, they would have to walk all the way to get me. The trail didn't cross many roads in this area. I was stuck. I sat down, took a deep breath, and thought about what to do. I had a first aid kit in my backpack. I wrapped my ankle as well as I could, the cold bandage giving me some relief. I had a small break, 
and every step I took sent pain up my leg. But I had no other choice. I had to walk back. The walk back was really hard. Every step was a struggle. I found a strong branch and used it as a temporary crutch, but it wasn't great. The seven-mile walk back felt like it took forever. But it gave me time to think. I realized how unprepared I was for this kind of situation. I decided then and there that I would always carry walking poles in my bag, even if I didn't use them often. They would be better than any branch I could find. Once I got back, I started doing a lot of exercises for my ankles, knees, and hips to avoid getting hurt. It changed my life. I learned that it's not just about being strong, but also about being flexible and mobile. The forest was my escape, a quiet place away from the city's noise. I've been down these paths more times than I can count, sometimes staying out so late that I'd catch the sunrise. That night, the air felt sharp and the moon was so bright it made the tree's shadows stretch out like fingers. Deep into my walk, with just my headlamp and the fireflies for light, I found something weird, a bunch of shacks thrown together from junk like old metal and ripped up sheets. It was so strange and out of nowhere that I just froze. There was this fire pit made from a used tire, still burning, making the whole place look spooky. It felt like people had just been there, but it was dead silent. No talking, no one moving around, just a fire crackling and an owl somewhere far off. I got nosy and looked around. The shacks were rough but looked like they could fit maybe twelve people. Stuff was left all over, like a banged up cooking pot a toy doll missing an eye, and some beat-up boots. It looked like whoever was here had to leave fast and didn't want to be found. I walked around the fire, feeling the heat on my face, thinking hard about why someone would leave a fire like this and where they'd go in such a rush. I must have been there for hours, just thinking, as the sky turned from pitch black to a dark blue. Then I saw it, footprints leading out of the camp, fresh and clear, heading into the bushes. Someone had taken off quick. The sun started to break through the trees, lighting everything up. It was time for me to head home. But I couldn't shake off the picture of that empty camp. It was like a warning that some things in the forest are better off not found. It was getting dark as I walked on a trail in Virginia. My shoes made a crunching sound on the dry leaves. The forest was quiet, and the air smelled like pine trees and wet soil. I thought I was alone. I found a place to sit and rest, a small open area with a fallen tree. I sat down, and my bag landed softly on the ground. The quiet was nice, very different from the loud city I was used to. I closed my eyes, enjoying the peace. Then, I heard a stick break behind me. My eyes opened wide, and my heart started beating fast. I turned around slowly, looking through the thick trees. There, hidden by a tree, was a hunter. He was pointing his gun at me, his eyes filled with shock. In that moment, everything seemed to slow down. I saw him realize that I wasn't an animal, but a person. He quickly put his gun down and hid behind the tree. But I had seen him. I knew he was there. I felt a rush of fear as I picked up my bag and ran. I didn't look back, didn't stop to breathe. I just ran, the trees passing by in a blur. The quiet of the forest now felt scary, every sound making me jump. After what felt like forever, I saw the start of the trail. I ran out of the forest, my chest hurting from the cold air. I was safe. I was out of the forest. As I caught my breath, I looked back at the forest. It was still beautiful and calm, but it didn't feel the same anymore. I had been in danger, had felt the fear of being hunted. It was something I would always remember. <laughs>